Imhotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. So those watching on Facebook and YouTube, we want to welcome you as well. Welcome to the African History Network show. It is Sunday, June 5th, 2022. And we are live. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. On the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct your own behavior. So on today's show, uh, we're going to deal with, now we've been following this topic here for, the, uh, for a number of months. We've talked about it here on the show. Uh, the California Reparations Task Force, the California Reparations Task Force, this past Wednesday, June 1st, released a comprehensive 500 page study that uh, documents how the history of slavery in the state of California, but also racism, Jim Crow segregation, uh, et cetera, how this has damaged and harmed African-Americans over decades, but also African-Americans across the country. OK, and this and by members of the task force is said that this is the most comprehensive study of this type dealing with systemic racism, and how African-Americans are being harmed. This is the most comprehensive study since the Kerner Commission report from 1968. OK, so we're going to get deep into this on today's show. We're going to get uh, we'll, we'll deal with the California uh the California Reparations Task Force, a uh, 500 page uh, study documenting how slavery, racism, et cetera, has impacted nearly every aspect of black life in America and is still being felt today. We'll talk about that. Also, we'll deal with the Kerner Commission report. What was the Kerner Commission report of 1968? Now, we talked about this here on this show before the Kerner Commission report because we actually deal with real topics here. Not a bunch of nonsensical gossip and things like this. And the Kerner Commission report documented the negative impacts of racism, et cetera, on African-Americans. And they found that um, this was commissioned in uh, uh, July 28, 1967. The Kerner Commission report was com commissioned July 28, 1967. It was ordered by President Lyndon Johnson. And President Lyndon Johnson wanted them to, uh, it was 11 member commission. He wanted them to find out uh, what was causing the rebellions that were taking place in this country. From uh, They looked at rebellions, the uprisings from 1964 to 1967, including the uh, 1967 Detroit rebellion. They He wanted to know what was causing their rebellions. Why did these rebellions happen? What can be done to prevent racial disturbance in the past uh, in the future what could what could be done to prevent racial disturbance from happening in the future and the kerner commission surveyed uh 23 cities across the country where these rebellions were taking place and what they found was that uh what they found was that uh that they were largely taken, that the largely black population was confined to central cities while a predominantly white population moved out, white flight, and, and that the racism of white Americans was, quote, essentially responsible for the explosive mixture leading to these uprisings, okay? This is what the Kerner Commission report found. And when it came to addressing what could be done to prevent this in the future, the Kerner Commission suggested that, that the federal government intervene to improve housing, improve education for African-Americans, improve housing for African-Americans, improve education, improve employment opportunities for African-Americans and social services. Also, the Kerner Commission report um, recommended that the federal government dismantle discriminatory practices in education, employment, and uh, the police force, okay, and criminal and criminal court systems. Now, President Lyndon Baines Johnson accepted the Kerner Commission report, but he did not support the conclusions and minimal efforts were made to address the problems identified by the Kerner Commission. Now, also, when you study this, the Vietnam War was going on at the same time. And the Vietnam War distracted 
a lot of the attention from the federal government, a lot of the federal government's attention, and it distracted a lot of media attention that would have been focused on the Kerner Commission report. And it distracted in the Vietnam War, distracted attention as well as away from the civil rights movement. OK, so we'll we'll talk some about the Kerner Commission report and get into some of these details, because this past week, the Kerner Commission report was mentioned in relationship to the California Reparations Task Force uh, uh, report as well. OK, then. I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday, okay, and we talked about uh, the job numbers that came out and uh, 390,000 uh, uh, jobs created also in the month of uh, in the month of May. Uh, we talked about the jobs report May 22, uh, May 2022, and we talked about also the communication problem that the white house is having the communication problem that the white house is having when it comes to communicating the positive things that the biden harris administration has done okay so we'll talk about that also all right now we know that um the uh buffalo shooting suspect peyton gendron we know the buffalo shooting suspect uh was charged with murder uh as a hate crime and domestic terrorism this past week he was on indicted on 25 charges okay indicted on 25 charges so we'll give you a breakdown uh of that as well and i told you he was going he was going to get more than one charge the one charge was the initial charge i told you more charges were coming you had a lot of idiots out here saying oh he was only charged with one thing you are a dumbass if you think that that's all he was going to get charged usually more charges follow that's the initial charge okay he was charged. He he got he he's, he he was indicted on twenty five counts. Okay, we're gonna uh, break that down uh, as well. And then uh, also the documentary "Heavy Is the Crown" from director Amadeus Christ. Uh, we've talked about that here on this show before. There's going to be a screening here in Detroit coming up. Um, we'll give you some information about that. It's going to be at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe. Listen to the African History Network show right here on nine ten AM Superstation Future Radio. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by, everybody. Share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. Stand by. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on your social media platforms. We're on only once a week on Sundays. Well, I'll do, I'll do some broadcasts throughout the week, but we're only on 9, 10, on, on Sundays now, 9 p.m. 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, we're gonna give you some information about my online class also, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Share this broadcast on your social media platforms, everybody, stand by. Okay, how you doing, Sunflowers? Back from break in three minutes. Stand by. Stand by. Back, back from break in three minutes. Okay, you can support the African History Network dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. This helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills, etc. Back from break in two minutes.
Stand by. Back from break in one minute. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. Back from break in one minute. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation of Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Okay, now on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, it's correct your own behavior, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself. And what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control the, control the radius of a man or a woman's thoughts, you can control the comforts of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Now, we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We deal with current events and history, politics, education, economic empowerment entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, to 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter, text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, to 22828. Sign up for our email newsletter uh, or visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay. Uh, okay, call in numbers 313 Seven seven eight seventy six hundred is call in number if you have a question or comment. All right, I want to go to this first story. We're going to go to here to clip number one here in just a second, Jalen. Let's pull this back up here. Okay, so NBC News. Uh, I, I was reading different articles from NBC News, uh, Washington Post. I showed you this piece here from the Washington Post uh, dealing with the California Reparations Task Force. California calls for comprehensive reparations for black Americans. Uh, this is from June 1st, 2022. The interim report on the California reparations task force comes as task members remain split on what reparations should look like. Okay. So this is from June 1st, 2022. We're going to come back to that one. I want to, I want to start with this one here from NBC news. They had a really, really, uh, a good article here. There was also a good one from msnbc.com um also that i read from um uh who was that one it was from the readout blog by uh, uh jahan jones the readout i'll show you that one as well okay uh california's unprecedented reparations report uh, details 100 years of anti-black harm. Details 150 years of anti-black harm. Okay, there should have been coverage this week on this. Roland Martin Unfiltered dealt with it. I saw a little bit in mainstream media. Reverend Al Sharpton talked about it uh, 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 on on uh, uh, Politics Nation. There should have been more coverage this week about this, especially after the shootings in Buffalo, New York. Okay, uh, the mass shooting in Buffalo, New York. In nearly 500 pages, the initial report recounts the, quote, moral and legal wrongs the American and Californian governments have inflicted upon their own black citizens. In nearly 500 pages, the initial report recounts the, quote, moral and legal wrongs the American Californian governments have inflicted upon their own black citizens. OK, now. A new report from California's first in the country statewide reparations task force. This is the statewide reparations task force in the state of California is the first type of task force like this in, in the country. And this and this report is probably is, is the first report coming from a state legislature as well. OK, and this is a comprehensive report, a new report from California's first in the state uh First in the first in the country statewide reparations task force details how slavery touched uh, nearly every aspect of black life 
in America producing innumerable harms that are still felt today, producing innumerable harms that are still felt today. And one of the reasons why a report like this is so important, because whatever uh, you're going to get into a legal fight, whatever reparations, whatever form reparations are in, whatever reparations are prescribed and Democrats control uh, both chambers of the state legislature in California, as well as the governorship, uh, whatever is distributed, whatever form reparations are in, they're going to be lawsuits to block it. So one, you want to make sure you thoroughly document what the harm is. Two, you want to make sure that your remedy, you fall, you're on strong legal footing because you don't want to get whatever reparations, whatever, uh, however you distribute reparations, the remedy, you don't want that struck down in court. Okay, so uh, the report, which was released on Wednesday, June 4th, 2022 offers a comprehensive look at the impacts of enslavement and generations of discrimination on black Californians okay but also African Americans broadly generations of black California generations of discrimination on black Californians and African Americans more broadly now African Americans only make up six percent of the population in California one of the reasons why this study is so important is because back in 2018, April of 2018, the result of a of a poll came out and it was the uh, 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King, April 4th, 2000, April 4th, uh, 1968. Forty percent of Americans polled said that African-Americans could be equally as successful as white people. If 40 uh, percent of white Americans polled said that African-Americans could be equally as successful as white people if they just tried harder, if they just tried harder. They didn't want to deal with the laws and policies put in place to maldistribute wealth, power, and resources. That's why this stuff has to be documented. As I've said numerous times before, America must have a massive history lesson. And when you prescribe the remedy, you have to thoroughly lay out what the problem is. And the problem was created by laws and policies. As, 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 as 9, 10 a.m. plays on, 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 on the promo clip for this show, you hear me say it was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies that take us out of this predicament. This study from the California Reparations Task Force thoroughly documents this. Read this article here from Newsweek.com, uh, April 4th, 2018. This was the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King. 40% of whites think black people just need to try harder poll fines 40 percent of whites think that black people just need to try harder okay now um it was this this poll was done by yougov who was known for doing polls okay um yougov asked a number of questions of what called racial resentment one of which centered on whether the respondent agreed with the statement it's really a matter of some people not trying hard enough. It's really a matter of some people not trying hard enough. Um, it's really a matter of people not trying hard enough. If blacks would only try harder, they could be just as well off as whites. Okay, now this is what happens. And, and, and you're dealing with a dumbed down electorate. Americans in general, regardless of race, are very ignorant of history. Ignorant of the law, ignorant of the U.S. Constitution. This is the result of this. Overall, 35% of us agreed, 16% strongly, 19% somewhat with the statement, 28% neither agreed nor disagreed. Okay. So when you go read this full, uh, read this full article, 40% of whites think people just need, they think black people just need to try harder. They ain't want to understand laws and policies, none of that stuff. Okay. Now, what they should do, these white people, these 40%, they should try harder to treat African-Americans like human beings. They should try harder to level the playing field. They should try harder to remove the, the laws and policies that maldistribute wealth, power, and resources into the hands of the dominant white society. That's what they should do. Okay, now, let's go back to this right here. This study finds that the damage, California Reparations Task Force, the 500-page study, 
it finds that the damage to black communities is extensive and that a variety of intentional, intentionally crafted policy, judicial decisions, and racism by private actors has created a widespread exclusion of black people that has not been sufficiently addressed at any level of government. Now, for all the people out there who want to say, especially Republicans who want to say that race, that slavery is in the past, that was a long time ago, that has, that has nothing to do with today, that's a lie. And the, evident, the evidence here documents that that's a lie. It shows a direct correlation between racial disparities today and the conditions of African-Americans and a legacy of decades of Jim Crow segregation, redlining, uh, housing discrimination, educational discrimination, et cetera, and ties us directly to slavery. And this is what I've said needs to happen. You have to show the direct relationship. All of the former slaves died in the 1950s. All of the former slaves died in the 1950s. You got to deal with how what we're dealing with today is directly related to chattel slavery that ended 157 years ago, and then deal with the deal with, deal with you know deal with the Civil War and the Reconstruction era and what happened after Reconstruction ended. This study finds that the damage to to the African American community is extensive, and that a variety of intentionally crafted policy, judicial decisions, which deals with the courts, which deals with the judicial branch of the government and racism by private actors has created why has created a widespread exclusion of African Americans that has not been sufficiently addressed at any level of the government. Quote, almost 150 years of active, conscious federal, state, and local government action and neglect of duty have resulted in compounded harms that are unique to black Americans, end quote. The authors of this study wrote in a draft reviewed by NBC News prior to its release. We're going to deal with all this on the other side of the break. You listen to the African History Network show. The call in number is 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number. You listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by, back from break in four minutes. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in also. Back from break in four minutes. Okay, be sure to register for the online history classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Classes discount is regularly $130. is on sale, uh, $60. We had a great class on Saturday. Soon as you register, you can watch uh, Saturday's class. Soon as you register, you can watch Saturday's class. So we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. Stand by. Back from breaking three. Back from breaking three minutes. Okay, back from breaking two minutes. Stand by. Stand by, everybody. Back from breaking one minute.
Stand by. Back from break in one minute. Stand by. Remember different topics here on the After History Network show that do a current events of history and some much, much more. We're going to give you an update on what's going on. This is about self-preservation. We have to extinguish the fire of white supremacy so you let us have consequences. Catch it all right here on 910 AM Superstation. All right. Great promo right there. Great promo reel right there for the show. Uh, it's 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. Okay, so I um, want to welcome everybody back to the show. That was my first time healing that one, I think. I uh, want to welcome everybody back to the show. Call the numbers 313-778-7600 if you have a question or comment. Uh, it's Sunday, June 5th, 2022, and we are live. Welcome to the African History Network show. Keep in mind, we're here just once a week now. Uh, Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can still follow me on my Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. I'm still on Roland Martin Unfiltered every Friday uh, as well. You can check me out there. I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, this past Friday. Um, and uh, I'll still do some broadcasts throughout the week on my social media platforms. Uh, I wonder, before we go back to the story here dealing with the California Reparations Task Force and this fantastic study that they've done, uh, this five and a page study dealing with um, the harmful effects of uh, slavery and racism, discrimination, Jim Crow segregation, et cetera, for decades, and how it's negatively impacted African Americans all throughout the country, not just in uh, California. Before we go to that, I want to uh, let you know that coming up, um, on June 15th at uh, June 15th, 2022, which is a Wednesday uh, at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe. They're doing a screening uh, director Amadeus Christ, director of the film Heavy is the Crown, that, which is in the Outer Darkness series. You've heard me talk about Heavy is the Crown here because I'm a dis distributor, distributor of the documentary. Um, they're gonna, uh, Amadeus Christ will be there. He's going to do a screening of the new film Heavy is the Crown, which features Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene. Professor James Small, who are two of my teachers. Uh, this is taking place Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. Showtime is 7 p.m. Uh, it's a $15 donation. Nanny's Now's Cafe is located at 71 Oakman uh, Boulevard in Highland Park, Michigan. 71 Oakman Boulevard in Highland Park, Michigan. Um, it uh, includes uh, popcorn and lemonade. Um, with the donation for more information call 313-865-1288 313-865-1288 i'll be there as well okay i'll be a vendor there also and um if you let me see i was talking to nandy today and she told me to let people know that um okay um oh yeah you if you have questions give her a call 313-865-1288 uh, okay and it's a fantastic documentary. It deals with the African origins of the uh, major world religions, the African origins of the major world religions. Tony Browder is featured in the documentary also. And you can order the documentary from our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. OK, I want to go back here to uh, the article we were looking at uh, right before the break. And this is from uh, this article here is from NBCNews.com. And it deals with the uh, California Reparations Task Force. California's unprecedented reparations report details 150 years of anti-Black harm. In nearly 500 pages, the initial report recounts the, quote, moral and legal wrongs the American and Californian governments have inflicted upon their own Black citizens, end quote. OK, so if we go back to this and we're going to go to clip one here. Uh, in just a minute, uh, Jalen, clip one from NBC News now from June 1st. We'll go to that here in just a second. OK, now uh, the report, which is the first to be released at the state level, the first to be released at the state level. 
comes amid an increased national discussion on rep on reparations as well as action at the local and municipal level so in last year 2021 hr 40 uh which is congressional legislation which originates in the house of representatives representative sheila jackson lee of tennessee of texas is to sponsor the bill we know the honorable john conyers from detroit 13th congressional district he was the original sponsor of the bill in 1989. in 2021 hr 40 congressional legislation that would create a national commission to study reparations and explain the u.s roles this is this is critical okay this is critical and explain the u.s government's role in enslavement and systemic discrimination uh they it, the, the bill passed out of the house judiciary committee for the first time in in uh i think it was something like 39 years something like that first time uh but it languished but um they have enough votes from my understanding they have enough votes to get it passed out of the house of representatives you need 218 votes to get any bill passed out of the house they don't have enough votes to get it passed in the senate because you need 60 votes in the senate which means you need 10 republicans to vote for the bill and you don't have two republicans that are going to vote for a reparations bill senator tim scott the only black republican in the senate out of 50 has already said he's not voting for reparations he's already said he's not voting for any reparations bill okay senator tim scott has already said he's not voting for any reparations bill okay so if the black republican is not going to vote for a reparations bill how many white republicans you think are going to vote for one so to get any reparations bill passed now th th this is the question that i ask people this is the question i ask people if you can't get a bill passed to study reparations explain to me how you get a bill passed to distribute or pay reparations if you can't get a bill passed in the federal government through this through both the house and the senate if you can't get one passed to study reparations explain to me how you get one passed to pay reparations you're gonna have to vote more people in the office who support reparations who support restitution whatever you want to call it i would take the name i, I wouldn't call it reparation because automatically it draws a lot of opposition I would call it restitution or not call it anything and just deal with the policies which is which is really the best strategy take the take the name reparations off of it because it automatically draws total opposition from all the republicans some cases could be some moderate democrats i would take the name off period and just deal with the policies and show how the policies are beneficial for not just African Americans, but for everybody. Because when you lift up African Americans, what, what what you do that's good that helps us is going to end up eventually helping everybody as well. And if you look at this study here from um, Citigroup Bank, and we've talked about it before, it deals with how the U.S. economy has lost sixteen trillion dollars in twenty years because of racism discrimination targeting african americans the u.s economy it shows how this hurts everybody so they didn't look at 157 years ago they didn't look at 246 years of slavery they just looked at 20 years from 2000 to 2022 everybody should read this article here from from cbs news cbsnews.com came out september 23rd 2020 I did a broadcast about it when it came out racism has cost the u.s 16 trillion dollars citigroup fine citigroup bank okay um america in this study they found that america could be could have 16 trillion dollars rich could be 16 trillion dollars richer if not for inequities in education housing wages and business investment between African Americans and white Americans over the past 20 years, okay? Inequities that harmed African Americans. The US economy could be $16 trillion richer if not for the inequities in education, housing, wages, and business investment. They looked at just 20 years from 2000 to 2020. The study released by Citigroup Bank 
is the latest in a body of research that attempts to quantify the economic impact of systemic racism, which is crucial because then you craft policy based upon the based upon the evidence and these discrepancies were formed by policy. So it's going to take policy laws and policies to correct the harm that laws and policies created. It was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies that take us out of this predicament. Citigroup Bank arrived at a $16 trillion figure after estimating that one, African-American workers have lost $113 billion in potential wages over the past two decades because they could not get a college degree. African-American workers have lost $113 billion in potential wages over the past two decades because they could not get a college degree. The how and, and, and the GI Bill and the discrimination that African American GIs suffered by being discriminated against when it came to trying to take full advantage of the GI benefits that contributes to that because the GI Bill gave low interest loans so they could go, go to college, start businesses, and buy homes. And uh, Representative uh, uh, Seth Molden and Representative uh, um, uh, Jim Clyburn have a bill right now in the House of Representatives to try to address the harm and the discrimination that many uh, uh, of our uh, grandparents or great grandparents faced when they try to take full advantage of the GI Bill benefits. Two, the housing market lost $218 billion in sales because African American applicants could not get home loans. We've talked about housing discrimination here and redlining and the federal government of the Department of Justice is going after banks that continue to redline and also digital redlining as well uh, from from banks that are only online and don't have physical uh, banks, don't have uh, brick and mortar banks. Thirdly, uh, uh, third, we're coming up on a break here, 13, about 13 trillion dollars in business revenue never flowed into the U.S. economy because African-American entrepreneurs could not get access to bank loans. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. Listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by. Share this broadcast on your uh, social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. All right. Call in numbers 313-778-7600 if you have a question or comment. Who still needs to register for the 10-week online class I teach on Saturdays and Sundays? Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understand the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. Miss class this Saturday, not a problem. As soon as you register, you can watch it. I'll post a link here. Classes on sale, $60, regularly $130. We have the information at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Stand by. Back from break in two minutes. Okay, back from break in two minutes.
Ban from breaking one minute. Bad from breaking one minute. The number of different topics here and after he's been over shows he will turn you into history and say much, much more. He's going to give you an update on what's going on. This is about self-preservation. We have to extinguish the fire of white supremacy. See, that's without consequence. Catch it all right here on 910 AM Superstation. Welcome back to the After History Network show right here on 910 AM Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. Okay, call in numbers 313-778-7600. If you have a question or comment, 313-778-7600. If you have a question or comment. Uh, if you want to support the African History Network, you can do so uh, through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN Show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN Show. And we have the information at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. This is our official cash app account, uh, dollar sign, the A-H-N show, S-H-O-W. When you go to it, it says Michael and shows my picture there up on the screen here. We have a, um, if you're watching on our Facebook or YouTube channels, we have a graphic here. These other ones are fake African History Network cash app accounts. I'm trying to get shut down. Cash app has launched an investigation into them because they've been stealing money from us. We have our official cash app tag here on the website and the yellow donate button also for PayPal. Okay. All right. Um, and then also, if you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization, we know that uh, Juneteenth is coming up. I'm speaking at a couple places here in the Detroit area for Juneteenth. Email me at AHN show at African history network.com. AHN show at African history network.com. Email me. Or you can call the African History Network at 313-462-0003, 313-462-0003. If you want me to do an in-person or virtual presentation, or if you want me to travel also, email us or call us, okay? I can respond very quickly to emails, AHN show at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right, I want to go back here to uh, the story, and we're going to go to... Uh, uh clip number one here in just a second we're coming to clip number one Jalen. uh right before the break we were talking about this study that i've talked about a number of times here on the show this came out september 2020 this article is from cbs news racism has cost the u.s 16 trillion dollars city group fines this is from city group bank okay so we'll read that uh, article and then uh i want to go back to this story here from uh, NBC News, which deals with the California Reparations Task Force the, uh, on Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, which coincidentally is the 101st year uh, commemoration of the Tulsa Race Massacre, June 1st, 1921. Uh, June 1st, 2022, they released this 500 page uh, study. California's unprecedented reparations report details 150 years of anti-black harm, details 150 years of anti-black harm. OK, uh, so if we go back to this piece here. Uh, let me see. What OK. So they talk about H.R. 40. Now, the California report covers not just the immediate impact of enslavement, not just the immediate impact of enslavement, but also the harms of decades of political neglect, finding that there has been sustained damage, finding that, that, that there has been sustained damage to generations of African-Americans. The reason why this is so important is, as I've said before, California does not have a, a, a large history of slavery. They don't. There's a period of time after California 
is allowed to come into the Union. California comes into the Union in 1850 as a free state. They're going to have about 1,500 African Americans that are in a quasi-slavery state. But they don't have a big history of slavery. They do have a big history of discrimination, redlining, all types of other laws and policies that did harm to African Americans and continue to do harm. So when we talk about repairing the damage, is not just dealing with slavery, it's dealing with all that that happened after slavery ended. This is why reparations has to be comprehensive. And this is why reparations cannot be just in the form of money. Because as I, as I said numerous times before, if we all got a million dollars today, white people will have it all back by this time next week. And the only thing we would have done is stimulated their, their economy. If we all got a million dollars today or half a million dollars, whatever number you want to put on it, white people have it all back by this time next week. The laws and policies that created the disparities would still be there. You haven't even scratched the surface. That's why you have to do a systems analysis of this. That's why studies like this are so important. Because you're just dealing at the surface level. You're dealing with symptoms. You got to get down to the root problem. The damage has had a lasting effect on the political a lasting effect on the political economic social physical mental mental and cultural well-being of black people particularly those descended from the formerly enslaved so we're dealing with african americans we're dealing with the people who have largely been taught to hate themselves this is why we're the only people who they can put out dehumanizing music about us and call us all type of n-words and bees and things like this and we don't retaliate against it they know they can get away with it we're the only people they can do that with we're the only people who would allow a corporation like atlanta records to put out a song like walk by cardi b featuring megan the stallion and put out a video like walk and atlanta records st is still in existence nobody else would tolerate something like that when uh michael jackson i think it was 1992 or so he had a song called they, they don't really care about us and he had a couple lines in the song that the jewish community felt was derogatory against jews they made i think the re i think the record company at the time was sony records they made sony take all those cds off the shelf take those lines out and then put the cd back on the shelf go research it i got articles from the uh anti-defamation league that deal with this this was the king of pop he didn't mean anything negative by it they didn't play games we're the only people who tolerate some nonsense like this the reason why is because what you do for yourself and what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself what you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself what you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you read heard and seen about yourself we're the only people who tolerate some nonsense like this okay when when you go look at this right here the mental damage okay you're dealing with the people who've largely been taught to hate themselves who've been taught to see reality through the eyes of europeans we've been stripped of our history culture language spiritual systems stripped of our names our family ties to uh uh, uh our ancestry in africa so if you give a mentally damaged people money and you don't deal with repairing the holistically the damage that's done what do you think a brain damaged people are going to do with money well all you got to do is look at the spending patterns of african americans right now every year we go to conferences to talk about how we spend 97 percent of our dollars with people that don't look like us what the hell you think is going to happen if we get a lump sum of money this is why cash payments can be part of a comprehensive reparations package to repair the damage of a legacy of slavery in decades of Jim Crow segregation, redlining, et cetera. But no way in the hell should reparations only be in the form of money because white people are going to get it all back by this time next week. Listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, stand by. These breaks come up quickly. Stand by, back from break in four minutes.
all right you got matthew who else is here y'all pretty quiet give us a thumbs up give us a heart give us a like on this broadcast Follow us on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. Turn on live notifications so you know when we go live. Follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P also. Stand by. Now from breaking three minutes. bathroom break in two minutes okay you can still register for the online history class i teach on saturdays and sundays ancient kemet the moors and the maafa understand the transatlantic slave trade what they didn't teach you in school and then on sundays i teach from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power 1865 to 1968 Stand by. Back from breaking one minute. That's right. 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, a division of Adele Media. We got the topic. Stand by. Now, we'll be able to number different topics here on the After History Network Show. We'll do recurring events and history and so much, much more. We're going to give you an update on what's going on. This is about self-preservation. We have to extinguish the fire of white supremacy. See, that's without consequence. Catch it all right here on 910 AM Superstation. The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 910 AM Superstation or Adele Media. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on that 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. We're in our second hour. Let's keep in mind, we're on Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this article here, we're dealing with this topic. Uh, this article came out March 30th, 2022. We've talked about it here a number of times here on the show. California Task Force votes to offer reparations only to descendants of enslaved people, only two descendants of enslaved people. This was a 5-4 decision. The decision came after weeks of debate about whether all black Californians should receive reparations. The reason why they had to do it for those who are actually descendants of formerly enslaved African people, as opposed to all African Americans or people of African descent in the state of California, is because there's a law in California that bans race-based policies, that bans discrimination from certain policies, discrimination against different racial groups, things like this from policies. They, they It bans race-based policies. So they're doing it based upon lineage. And you're going to have to be able to trace your ancestry to an African-American who arrived in California prior to 1900 okay prior to 1900 you see oh actually um uh to the united states not just california to the united states in a closely watched decision the state's reparation task force voted uh to move forward with 
then the, keep in mind this was march 2022 to move forward with compensation for african-american descendants of enslaved people and descendants of freed black people living in the united states prior or before the 19th century so before the year 1900 if your ancestors came here to this country in 1902 you're gonna be out of luck and guess what if we ever get reparations from the federal government it's going to be based upon lineage as well okay why is this why is this okay well i'm so glad you asked that question the reason why is because of law okay how many people know that the uh 1964 voting rights act makes it illegal to discriminate based upon race in federally funded programs um you can 1964 civil rights act is title six it's at archives.gov archives.gov which is the u.s national archives i encourage people to actually read the 1964 civil rights act and it breaks it down um well, i'm gonna pull it up right here it's title six i want to show it to you because it's important to understand law because we don't understand history law I mean, like i said americans are very ignorant of history law things like this but especially african americans that's why a lot of these uh social media black social media pimps that are, that have a disinformation campaign that's why a lot of them are so successful because we don't understand we don't understand a lot of this okay if we look at title six non-discrimination in federally funded programs this is at archives.gov the u.s national archives the 1964 civil rights act title six non-discrimination in federally assisted programs section 601 section 601 i'm blowing this up on the screen i want the people with even bad eyes to be able to read this let's go back to this title six section 601 non-discrimination and fairly funded programs okay here's what it says no person in the united states shall on the ground of race color or national origin be excluded from participating in be excluded from participating in be denied the benefit of or be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance okay now state of california has a similar law this is why you can't have race-based programs this is why you can't have programs just for black people this is why you can't have programs just for african americans this is why it makes no sense to me when you got people putting out black agendas saying they want race-based programs and something only for black people which means one you didn't understand law you don't understand law two you haven't read the 1964 civil rights act three you didn't even consult with attorneys to make sure what your proposal proposing is legal you didn't even consult with attorneys to make sure what you're proposing is legally sound especially attorneys who have experiencing crafting who have experienced crafting legislation you didn't consult with them because if you did they would have told you what you're proposing is illegal it's not gonna happen so you're selling crack pipe dreams who has explained this to you all those watching all those listen who's gonna listen on the podcast who has explained this to you i've talked about this before right here on this show when i was on a committee to write an executive order for the city of detroit because i've had experience writing public policy for a major city when i was on the committee to write an executive order for the city of detroit for the mayor's office the committee was headed up by the mayor's corporate counsel who's a lawyer in our first session it took us 13 months to finally get the executive order done it took us longer than we thought 
we went through different revisions there were different problems we went through the first thing that the corporate council told us is that you cannot we cannot have policies that are only for African Americans we can't have policies that are only for one race of people because it's illegal what we can do is craft this policy that benefits Detroiters people who live in Detroit but we can't have policies that are only for black people it's illegal the city gets sued and they're gonna lose in court hopefully more people more people will read this and stop putting this nonsense out to our people lying to them this has been lost since 1964. why don't more of our people know this title six of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. The reason why this is put in there, this is something we advocated for, because we were being discriminated against by federal policy for decades. This is at archives.gov. What's archives.gov? The official website of the U.S. National U.S. U.S. National Archives, where all this information is. These federal bills, U.S. Constitution, Declaration of Independence, all this stuff. Archives.gov free website all right um i want to go to this clip here clip number one this is from nbc news june 1st 2022 california reparations report details 150 years of moral and legal wrongs let's go to clip one please Jalen. california making the most significant step in american history toward granting its African-American descendants of slaves reparations. Just substantiating the claim for reparations for the African-American or American freedmen community on the municipal, state, and federal level. On Wednesday afternoon, the state government releasing the report of a task force formed by the state legislature to study the history of slavery, the state's sponsorship of it, and its costs on Californians today. We made the historic decision to affirm what we called lineage-based eligibility. So what that means is the community of eligibility will comprise of African Americans who are descendants of free and enslaved black people who were living in the United States prior to 1900. The group proposing that the state now offer reparations for direct descendants of slaves now living in California, but also, for instance, individuals outside of California whose ancestors were harmed by the state's policies. In 1852, the report says there were approximately 1,500 enslaved African Americans in California. The task force is also recommending restitution for black individuals whose ancestors were forced by the government out of their homes for government projects like highway construction, but also for consequences reaped by generations of government-complicit racism involving housing, employment, and educational discrimination. We pay for what we want to. We pay for wars. We paid for redevelopment of communities. And I think that we're capable. The question is, do we have the will? Do we have the moral fiber? This is the most extensive government commissioned report on America's black population in more than 50 years, since President Lyndon Johnson's 1968 Kerner Commission. California Governor Gavin Newsom backed the creation of this California task force in 2020. The group will now spend the next year proposing the mechanisms in which reparations would be extended. In Wednesday's report, it already outlined the creation of a government office to help residents track their family lineage and file reparations claims. What does the action of this report actually ultimately look like? I think it's a great opportunity to set an example for the rest of the nation on what atonement looks like, but more importantly, what an apology and uh, uh, reparations can look like. The hope for the task force that the state government will lead the way in making good on the report's proposals. Do you have faith, though, that those very lawmakers will take action and offer those reparations uh, of, based off the findings of this report? Absolutely. I have um, the absolute faith in the California state legislature to take uh, this to the finish line, so to speak. Um, absolutely. All right, Von Hilliard is joining us now. So, Von, this is the task force's uh, initial report. What happens now? 
Yeah, Tom, one year from now is when we will be revisiting this very conversation because this task force has been assigned by the state legislature to figure out how to best offer these reparations, how the mechanics of this would actually work here. And that is uh, very much the complicating part of all this. When we look at the federal level, Tom, the U.S. Congress, Democrats have introduced uh, a proposal since 1989, every year since 1989, uh, calling for a commission to look at reparations across the country. But even in this Democratic uh, backed house here, that has never come to a full House floor vote. Uh, now, there are some justice groups that have called on President Biden just last month to uh, issue an executive order, which would call for a commission on reparations. He is yet to do so as well. And that is why there are so many eyes looking at what California ultimately does here in the year ahead. Okay. All right. Great reporting there from Vaughn Hilliard for NBC News. That's at, uh, that clip is at um, NBCnews.com. I think it's also on MSNBC's website. Name of that clip, California Reparations Report details 150 years of moral and legal wrongs. Uh, the article I was showing you from NBC News, this one right here, that clip is in this article, so you can watch it in its entirety. And this is why it's important to understand law as well okay because in the state of california they have a law it's illegal to have race-based policies so that's this is why they have to do it based upon lineage they can't have policies that are only for one race of people all right and at the federal government title six of the 1964 civil rights act bans race-based policies as well this is why it's important to understand law Okay, uh, we'll continue this on the other side of the break. You listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, stand by. Back from break in four minutes. Back from breaking four minutes. Stand by. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on social media platforms. They've allowed what issue to drag on? What are you talking about, Matthew? Okay, we got Ruby, Kenya, just a few of the people watching. Stand by. Okay, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, A-C-H-O-S-H-O-W, when you go to it, it'll say Michael and show my picture there. Or through Cash App, uh, the AHN show. Stand by. Back for breaking two minutes. After breaking two minutes. After breaking one minute.
Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the Future Radio. Okay, uh, call in numbers 313-778-7600. If you have a question or comment, 313-778-7600. If you have a question or comment. Okay, I want to go back to um, this article we were looking at right before the break. We're going to clip number two, Jalen. From ABC News Channel 10 out of California. We're going to that here in just a minute. Um, if we go back to uh, NBC News had a really good article here and it referenced the Kerner Commission report. We're going to talk about the Kerner Commission report here in just a minute. Now, in that segment I just played from NBC News from June 1st, 2022, California reparations report details 150 years or more on legal wrongs. Uh, at the end, Von Hilliard talked about how um, people are activists are asking President Joe Biden to do an executive order to convene a commission to study reparations and make recommendations. He, he can do that. It's not going to have the same impact as a congressional study. The reason why is, is because Congress has to vote on this. The White House does not vote on reparations. The White House can't give out reparations. The ability to tax and spend based upon Article 1, Section 9, Clause 7 of the U.S. Constitution belongs to Congress. Congress has to vote on, on this. It has to pass the House and the Senate. So the, 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 it, it, it has more weight for the task force to originate in Congress and be a congressional task force. And Congress does oversight. Congress does studies all the time on all different subjects. Because Congress has to vote on it, it has more weight for that task force to come from Congress. I think before, if Biden organizes a task force, what he should do now, when he came into office, what he did was he disbanded the 1776 commission that the trader in chief Benedict Donald organized and Benedict Donald uh, commissioned the 1776 report, which was historically inaccurate, things like this. Biden should do a report. He, Biden should convene a commission that does the opposite of what the 1776 commission did. He should convene a commission that deal, that puts together a report that deals with the real history of this country and give America a real history that lesson that America needs because Americans are very ignorant of history. And then, uh, after that, he can do he, if he wants to do an executive order to form a reparations task force or maybe at the same time. But you got to deal. you got to have a commission also to counter what the 1776 commission did. He did disband the 1776 commission. He did take down the study that was at whitehouse.gov. You need to have another commission to educate all of America on the history of this country. And put that study at whitehouse.gov also. All right. Um, but this all deals with voting. Because you need 60 votes in the Senate to get any reparations bill passed in the Senate. Okay. So show me two Republicans that support. Re you need 10 Republicans to vote for a bill to study reparations. You don't have two Republicans. You don't even have one. The black Republican. Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina already said he's not voting for reparations, any reparations bill, even to study it. So what, what, what does that mean? You got to vote more people into the Senate who support reparations, any type, restitution, whatever you want to call it. You got to vote more people in the office that support that and, and, and put the people back in office in the House of Representatives because they're up every two years who support it. What I'm hearing, they have over 218 votes to get H.R. 40 passed in the House is dead on arrival in the Senate. So we have to understand long term strategy to get bills passed out of the House and out of the Senate to get it to, to the president's desk to sign in the law. Getting the bill passed in the House of Representatives is just getting to the 50 yard line. You have to get the bill. You have to go another 50 yards and get into the end zone. OK, um, if you go back to this, we're going to go to clip two in just a second here. Uh, I want to squeeze. Uh, I want to go back to this article here before we go back, before we come up on another break. OK, so if we go back to this piece here, 
every now Camila Moore is the chairwoman of this commission. And she was also in the clip that you heard that I just played from NBC News. She's an attorney, people. She's an attorney. OK, also uh, Roland Martin has interviewed her on Ro Roland Martin and Filter. Camila Moore said every state has every state has some history in the African-American community. Every state has some history of harm in the African-American community. Every state has some history in the harm of the African-American community, said Camila Moore, a Los Angeles based attorney and repertory justice scholar, reparations justice scholar, who chairs the California's reparations task force. The nine member task force, which a state law created in 2020. So you got the task force through voting is a state law that created the task force. It was laws and policies to put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies to get us out of this predicament. You can have all the economic empowerment you want. I'm all for economic empowerment. My, my degree is in business administration. I understand this better than most people. Government and policies shape the economy that your economic empowerment operates within. Government and policies shape the economy that your black owned business depends upon to survive. And it's not going to be economic empowerment alone that gets us out of this predicament. Because it was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. The nine member task force, which a state law created in 2020, is charged with studying the impacts of enslavement on black Californians and coming up with possible plans for restitution. Now, here's a picture of the 11 member Kerner Commission. OK, Senator Edward Brooks was on the. He was an uh, African-American Republican senator. He was uh, on the Kerner Commission also. This was convened uh, July 28th, uh, 1967, with President, President Lyndon Johnson. This picture here is um, from July 31st, 1967. OK, uh, it was commissioned uh, July 28th, 1967. This uh, uh, picture here is from the first meeting of the National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders, also called the Kerner Commission. Uh, this is the first meeting at the White House. OK, now this interim report coming from the California State uh, California Reparations Task Force, this interim report produced by the civil rights arm of the California Department of Justice with input from the task force includes testimony from experts like Dr. Greg Carr. I'm gonna play a clip of Dr. Greg Carr here in just a minute, chair, uh, who's chair of the Afro-American Studies Department, Howard University, includes testimony from experts and public meetings of the task force, as well as a comprehensive review of media articles, academic, pap academic papers, and historical documents. Members of the task force argue that the report is the most comprehensive look at structural barriers African Americans face since the 1968 Kerner Commission report. Okay, members of the task force argue that the report, this 500 page report, is the most comprehensive look at structural barriers African Americans face since the 1968 Kerner Commission report. A second report from the California task force detailing specific reparations proposals and who should be eligible for the remedies for the repairing of the damage is expected next year in 2023. Okay, I wanna go to uh, this next clip here. This is from ABC Channel 10, um, Calif uh, California Reparations Task Force, money not the only solution okay and you're going to hear from assembly uh assemblymen uh uh an assemblyman here uh who's talking about this bill let's go to uh clip two please the california reparations force released its groundbreaking report today detailing the ongoing harms black americans have suffered as a result of slavery and its lingering effects to this day ABC 10's Becca Hobbegger is walking us through this 500-page report and why task force members say it's an important step forward. When you read what has been done in California against African-Americans, it's unbelievably eye-opening. Democratic Assemblymember Reg 
Cardinal Byron Jones Sawyer Sr. is one of nine members of the California Reparations Task Force. Established 2020 when state lawmakers passed AB 3121, the task force is the first statewide effort in the nation to examine the long-lasting impacts of slavery and how to make amends. We really do need to look at some of the laws that were in place that restricted African Americans to live certain places, that restricted who you could marry. You could not marry out of your race here in California. And so the, the vestiges of, of slavery that may have started in the South and the East Coast still permeated in California society. For a year now, the task force has met almost monthly, discussing different topics each time, like gentrification and homelessness, racism in banking, discrimination in the tech sector, and at the start of it all, slavery, with testimony from invited speakers, including doctors, professors, civil rights leaders, and activists, as well as comments from the public. The result is this newly released 500-page report. This is really about harm to the descendants of slaves, so that we can then go back and say, what do we need to reverse those harms. Harms, for example, like despite California entering the Union in 1850 as a free state, its early state government supported slavery. Some scholars estimate that up to 1,500 enslaved African Americans lived in California in 1852. California did not allow black men to vote until 1879. The state also passed many of the voter suppression laws that were used in the South. California prohibited individuals convicted of felonies from voting, added a poll tax, and put in place a literacy test. The report also has some preliminary recommendations for reparations, although a final report due a year from now will detail the steps they'd like state lawmakers to take. Just giving the community money is not the solution. You have to give them other things to make sure they, they make their community whole. This is okay, we're going to continue this on the other side of the break. This is what I'm trying to explain all the cut to check people who don't understand history, policy, law. Just giving money ain't going to solve it. You have to, to, to repair the damage you have to analyze the damage done that's why studies like this are so important okay we're going to continue this on the other side of the break list to the african history network show on michael m hotel we'll be back in a few minutes back from break in four minutes stand by Stand by. Back from breaking four minutes. Okay, how's everybody doing? Give us a heart, give us a thumbs up, give us a like on this broadcast. Who still needs to uh, register for the online history classes? I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. We have them in a course bundle. Stand by. We have them in the course bundle, so you can uh, register uh, for both classes for a hundred dollars. It's about a three hundred sixty dollar value because you're going to get some bonus lectures, also bonus content. Okay, back from break in three minutes. Stand by. Back from breaking two minutes.
after breaking one minute. Everybody don't know what happens. This is the problem people make. Not only that, you have to prove it and you have to be able to defend your argument in court. This is what people don't understand. Give you an update on what's going on. This is about self preservation. We have to extinguish the fire of white supremacy. See, let's just have consequences. Catch it all right here on 910 AM Superstation. All right, welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM Superstation, the future radio. Um, there's a good uh, call number 313 778 7600. Uh, 313 778 76. 313-778-7600 is a call in number if you have a question or comment. Um, for some reason, people think Americans understand U.S. history. No, they don't. And historians will tell you this. Okay? Not only that, we don't understand the U.S. Constitution. There's a good segment. There's a good article and there's, there's a segment from uh, CBS News from January 19th 2021 we've dealt with it here on this show before i encourage everybody to go read this article and watch the video in it most americans don't know what's in the constitution a crisis of civic education this is january 20 january 19th 2021 this is about two weeks after the january 6 2021 insurrection this is the day before president joe biden and vice president kamala harris were sworn into office okay watch the video in here and go read this article just as Americans don't understand the Constitution, they don't understand history. And a lot of them don't understand how all this is connected to laws and policies and connected to what's taking place right now. This is how this game could be ran on people. OK, you look at the article that we talk about from uh, Time magazine that deals with how 45 out of 50 states in their schools are not teaching the history of Reconstruction properly or, or not teaching the history of Reconstruction at all. And most of these students won't get an educational reconstruction until they get to college, but most of them are not going to go to college for various reasons. Um, this article here talks about how the uh, inauguration process is detailed in the 20th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The impeachment of a president is in Article One of the U.S. Constitution. Article One deals with the powers. There's seven articles to the U.S. Constitution, 27 amendments. Article One deals with the powers of congress article two deals with the power of the presidency the inauguration process is detailed in the, in the 20th amendment to the u.s constitution the impeachment of a president is described in article one section two and three article one sections two and three and the 2020 election results were certified by uh the states and counted by congress in accordance with article two and the 12th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, 12th Amendment of 1803. And the and the, and the, um, the Electoral College certifies the uh, presidential election votes on the first Sunday following the second Wednesday in December. The first Sunday following the second Wednesday in December. So, uh, but for all its wisdom, the Constitution has a problem. Most Americans don't know what's in it. Republicans and Democrats both say they're protecting the Constitution. Benedict Donald, President Trump, referenced the Constitution no fewer than 16 times ahead of the Capitol riots this month, January 2021, when this article came out, urging supporters to fight a supposedly unconstitutional election. The election was constitutional. Uh, they... The support the um, insurrectionists that breached the U.S. Capitol building interrupted a constitutionally mandated joint session of Congress to certify the presidential election results. Jeffrey Rosen, CBS News constitutional law expert, told CBS this morning. Uh, he said, we are living in unprecedented times. Now, the Constitution is a 7,500 word blueprint for America, establishing our national government, basic rights and a process for addressing our problems, at least in theory. 
quote, the Constitution provides as many questions and answers, and it provides a form or a platform for civil dialogue and debate so we can peacefully resolve those questions, he said. Uh, he also he's also president of the National Constitution uh, Center. OK, now. Um, there's no doubt that we are in a crisis of civic education. There's no doubt we are in a crisis of civic education. The framers knew that the consequences of constitutional ignorance and being guided by passion rather than reason were, were armed mobs rather than reason were armed mobs. Well, we just saw that they were right about that, he replied. The Constitution outlines that every immigrant to this country has to pass a civics test to become a naturalized citizen. You might assume Americans by birth might do at least as well as Americans by choice, but that wasn't always the case. CBS News decided to use some basic questions from that very exam to ask people just how much they knew and get a sense of just how deep a crisis the country is in. This also is tied to a lack of understanding of history and lack of understanding of the history of slavery, the legacy of slavery, things like this. This is why you need these studies. People that don't think you need these studies haven't studied this history. And you haven't, you don't understand how dumbed down of, a, of an electorate and a citizen citizenry we're dealing with. Read this article here from um, uh, CBS News. Okay, now I want to go to this. Uh, okay, because we got uh, okay, we had time before the break. I want to go. I want to go back to uh, clip number two. Finish the rest of clip number two. This is from ABC Channel Ten. Uh, this clip is from June first, twenty twenty two. California Reparations Task Force, money not the only solution. Let's go back to this clip, please, Jalen. You have to give them other things to make sure they, they make their community whole. This is better education, access to capital, being able to close the earnings gap. Task Force members call this the most comprehensive report of its kind since 1968, when President Lyndon B. Johnson commissioned a study on the root causes of urban riots and civil unrest happening at the time. The so-called Kerner Commission report famously stated, this is our basic conclusion. Our nation is moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. That was 54 years ago, and the words remain just as relevant today, say members of the California Reparations Task Force. There have been things that have gone on in America that have stifled, impeded, or stopped African Americans from really realizing our full potential. The task force hopes this new report will spark conversations on the state level, be a model for other states, and even inspire federal lawmakers. It's not all about money. It's about generational change for all African Americans. Now, the task force voted in March to limit restitution to descendants of enslaved black people. As for next steps, the report is going to state lawmakers for their review. Now, the final report is due next year. You can read today's report or a shorter summary with key findings. We have links to both at abc10.com. All right. You see this Great. Okay, pause right there. Thank you. Great reporting from um, abc10.com. Um, and also read this article here from March 2022 from New York Times. Uh, California task force votes to offer reparations only to descendants of enslaved people. That's because in California, they have a law that bans race based policies. You can't have laws or policies for only one race of people in the state of California. Same thing exists uh, at the federal level because of Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act non-discrimination in federal and federally assisted programs section 601 of the 1964 civil rights act as uh we talked about early in the show okay so re read that as well uh, this is why it's important to study law uh, 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 to understand law if you're going to craft policies and deal with policies and say we want this and we want that and 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 stop listening to these uh People just putting this nonsense out here, pimping our people. Once again, this is uh 1964 Civil Rights Act. This is at archives.gov. Archives.gov, official website of the U.S. National Archives. Title VI, non-discrimination of federally assisted programs, section 601, 
no person in the United States shall on the on the ground of race, color or national origin be excluded from participation in be denied the benefits of or be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. OK, now uh, I want you to hear quickly hear from Dr. Greg Carr chair of the Afro-American Studies Department at uh, Howard University. Uh, I want to go to clip three here, Jalen. This is from Roland Martin Unfiltered from Thursday, uh, June 2nd, 2022. Let's go to this clip, please. Who you think you're going to be dealing with to try to get it? Right. Like, literally. I don't know about y'all. I ain't heard one Republican say... I'm down reparations. <laughs> so no. it, it's sort of laughable that folks going to try to tear down one side, which is the only pathway you got. I mean, let's be real clear. Democrats control California House, mm -hmm. Senate, and the governor's mansion, which means you're going to have to convince them to get make this done exactly. and greg every democrat in california don't represent a black district mm -hmm. black people only make up six percent of la yep but these other folks that you swear they experts on politics go ahead You're okay we'll continue this on another side of the break uh, I want you to hear from Dr. Greg Carr, and I'm going to share a segment uh, when I was on Roller Martin Unfiltered uh, on Friday, June second, uh, Friday, June third. Listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, stand by. Back from break in four minutes. Stand by. Back from breaking one minute. Stand by. Stand by. <clears throat> 
Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. Okay, hey, I want to um, let you know that coming up um, Wednesday, June 15th, at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, director Amadeus Christ, who's the director of the new documentary, Heavy is the Crown, which is in the Out of Darkness series. It, and Heavy is the Crown deals with the African origins of the major uh, world religions. Um, Amadeus is going to do a screening of the documentary, Heavy is the Crown, which features Professor Kabahai Wafakamane and Professor Jane Small, who are two of my teachers. We had them here on the African History Network show in the month of April 2022. Also features uh, Tony Browder and uh, David Banner. Uh, so it was a $15 donation. Uh, it's taking place Wednesday, June 15, 2022. Showtime is 7 p.m. I'll be there as well. And I'll um, have a vendor table, my DVD lectures, things like that. Nandy's Knowledge Cafe is located at 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan. 71 Oakman Avenue, Highland Park, Michigan. Uh, you get popcorn and lemonade with uh, the donation as well. For more information, call 313-865-1288. 313-865-1288. We'll also uh, have this at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Next Sunday, uh, on our Sunday, June 12th show, uh, our guest is going to be uh, Director Amadeus Christ to talk about uh, this documentary and talk about the screening uh, as well. Okay, uh, let's go back quickly here to a couple minutes of uh, this clip here from Roland Martin Unfiltered. And um, uh, Dr. Greg Carr and Roland were talking about the California Reparations Task Force in a 500 page study. This is from June 2nd, 2022. Let's go back to a couple more minutes of this, uh, Jalen. Your thoughts? No, I I'll just keep this quick. I'm very torn by this report. I haven't read all the 500 pages, but I've read most of them. It only came out yesterday after all. <laughs> so on that chance. But uh, I'm, I'm very torn about this. Um, there's very little new in the report. We've seen these kind of reports before. Our fair brother, Paul Wilson, 1951, we charged genocide. The form there was the United Nations. That's a whole other conversation. But um, I was concerned, first of all, that the entire document was drafted and written and edited by lawyers and law clerks and members of the AG office in California, that the supporting contributors were all law clerks or, or lawyers in the AG's department that the expert commentators, the expert contributors, rather, there were four, I think, four or six of them. Sandy Darity and Kristen Mullen, his partner, were at the heart of this, which is why the deeply flawed logic of the structure of the report was just alarming to me. This is intellectual warfare. You might, you might only get one shot at this. What, what, what we see is the litany of abuses. They did a decent job at that, although reading through the footnotes, I was, I was very concerned about who they didn't include. This is when you put your best foot forward and the cherry picking. And I don't blame the, the staff because they don't know black scholarship. So I know why you picked certain people and, and left everybody else out. Uh, I was concerned, if I'll end with this, uh, the chapter on economic kind of harm. Yeah, Sandy Darity's footnotes were all through that. I see what he's doing. You kind of model this up so you can get at H.R. 40, the federal legislation. And here's where the concern comes in. And here's where if you're going to get this through, it's going to be an issue. Everything in just about all of those chapters applies to anybody black. So at the end of the executive su summary for Section 15, the, the call, they proposed setting up something called the California African American Freedmen Affairs Agency to help people trace their lineage. Lineage is going to be the hill that fractures this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Who came from the Caribbean, who suffered the afterlives of enslavement that are shot through your entire document. How are you going to exclude people in all of those categories who suffer because they're black? Now, I get the class thing. I get that there are differences. I get it better than you do. Trust me on that. But the point is this. You cannot make a political coalition when you start with who you're going to lead out of it. And it's going to be a whole bunch of white people show up with better records than you do saying, give me my reparation in whatever form Woo! it is. And I think mm. that hill that I'm waiting to see what comes up next in this next part of the report. But, but Roland, I, I, I should end on a positive note. I said it's going to be Let me just say this. <laughs> this is a step forward. I'm mm -hmm. like black people. What I'm saying is we got to be smarter than that. We come from a tradition of much better intellectual work than this. So I'm saying, yes, we got to fight. But damn it, they passed a damn uh, ballot initiative in California that doesn't allow you to use race in a remedy. 
So you just going to accept that? I'm with you, Reese. You gotta, now you got to get out and pass a new ballot of initiative to take that off because they're hiding behind interpretation of the law to try to exclude black people. And, I, and that's something that, you know, I'm torn. I, I, the best right. I can do right, now is just be right quiet. Well, Greg, okay, you had one person. Right right pause, right pause it right there. Pause it right there. Jalen, stop the clip. Pause it. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, we're going to go to clip three. This is from uh, June 3rd, 2022. I was on Roller Martin Unfiltered. But it's very important people understand. You got white people who have African slave ancestry also because of intermixing, either forced intermixing or um, by choice, whatever it is, really don't matter at this point. You got white people who have better records than we do because of slavery and we, you know, don't a lot of us don't have the records and they gonna qualify for reparations too nobody wants to talk about that uh i want to go to this clip here uh friday when i was on roller martin unfiltered we talked about the jobs report and the lack of communication from the white house on uh the the positive things that uh the biden harris administration has has done let's go to uh this clip Jalen. Clip number four. But, but, the, but the point that I'm, I'm making here, uh, Michael, that is still it's confusing to me. When you're able to say, hey, folks, and, and, and to me, it has to repeat over and over again. Hey, Correct. guess what the price of gas was in January before Putin went into Ukraine? Gas has gone up a dollar and 40 cents. Now, right. the reality is Biden can't stop that. Congress can't stop that. And I think part of this problem is that we have a bunch of simple signers in this country who somehow don't understand that we literally are living in a global economy. And what the hell happens on the other side of the world has a direct impact on price of gasoline in the United States. Well, you're absolutely correct. The, uh, the European Union, it just came out 8.1% uh, inflation year over year. Uh, so what happens on the other side of the world impacts what happens here in the U.S. So, yes, uh, Biden and the White House, they need to have town hall meetings. Uh, they need to communicate the message over and over and over again. Also, they really need to hire some social media experts who can break this information down, disseminate this information to people who don't follow this on a daily basis, to Generation Z, to uh, millennials, et cetera. They have they, they have good numbers, just like, you know, I think a uh, week before last, we went on last Friday for Memorial Day, week before last, there's a night I talked about this 19 page document at WhiteHouse.gov that breaks down how the Biden Harris administration policies are helping the African-American community. You, you, you would think that they would have that like on the front page of WhiteHouse.gov. OK, I know about it because I, I research things like that. But a lot of people don't know this stuff exists. If people just Google how have the policies of the Biden Harris administration helped African Americans? But they're not. The okay, but Michael, that's the point. Yeah. No, the average person's not going to Google it. So you have to right. say it. It has to be consistent. Okay. Uh, so those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching. We're going to go for a few more minutes. We're out of time here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. Uh, they should Google it. OK, they should Google it because they Google everything else. They'll Google what's going on with Cardi B and Offset or Megan Thee Stallion or um, Will and Jada or any of this other superfluous nonsense. They'll Google that. They should Google this as well. How have the policies of the Biden-Harris administration uh, helped the African-American community? A 19 page document is going to come up that's at uh, WhiteHouse.gov. We'll talk about this. Uh, we're going to go for a few more minutes. Those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching. Uh, we'll be back next Sunday. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And we'll talk to you next time. Peace. Okay, stand by. Uh, let me pull this up quickly here. And um, I want the updated. I want the updated one. This is the one from uh, October 2021. There's an updated fact sheet, and there's 22 pages. Uh, equity, not that one. Not the one on equity. I want this one right here. And I'm going to um, search for this here. I want the one from February 28th. February 28th, 2022, because this is the updated 
uh, fact sheet. Uh, let me see. Don't I have that up here? Okay, this is it right here. This is at whitehouse.gov. Whitehouse.gov is the official website of the White House. All this information is at whitehouse.gov. How many people have read this? Fact sheet. The Biden-Harris administration advances equity and opportunity for black people and, commun and communities across the country. If you Google how have the policies of the Biden-Harris administration helped the African-American community, this is the first thing that comes up. This is the most recent one. There's one from October 2021. Okay. This is the most recent one that comes up. Uh, and I, all you got to do is do a Yahoo search because we search everything else on Yahoo or Google. We need to start searching out stuff on politics. If you Google how had the policies of the Biden Harris administration help black people, this is comes up right here. This fact sheet. OK, so we have to search out this information as well. Yeah, they need to do a better uh, uh, job of communicating. But also we need to do a better job of reading. We need to do a better job of researching this information and stop listening to these dumbasses on social media. Keep lying to us and keep pimping us. Um, OK, so if we look at this here quickly, I don't have time to get through this. I want to get back to this clip here from um, from Friday. But if we look at this very quickly. What they do is they go category by category and break down how the policies from the Biden Harris administration are helping African Americans. Once, once again, the name of this fact sheet, the Biden Harris administration advances equity and opportunity for black people and communities uh, and communities across the country. Okay. Um, so it, it, they look at first thing to look at economic opportunity for black families and communities, uh, by signing economic opportunities for black, uh, families and communities by signing into law the historic American Rescue Plan, the historic American Rescue Plan, which no Republicans in the House of Representatives or U.S. Senate voted for. I can't stress that enough, okay? Um, and, and, and the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which only 19 Republicans in the House voted for and only 13 or 14 Republicans in the uh, House of Representatives voted for. Uh, in implementing robust regulatory reform, President Joe Biden has, has helped create new economic opportunities for black Americans and made long overdue investments in black communities. These transformative policies and programs include. Now, one of them also is five hundred uh, uh, five point eight billion dollars for HBCUs in twenty twenty one. Which, which is a record amount of funding that HBCUs have, have gotten in one year. That's the most they've ever gotten in one year. Uh, providing immediate relief to black people and families through the American Rescue Plan. The American Rescue Plan provided cash relief directly to low and middle income Americans last year and cut black child poverty by 33%. Now, yes, it expired. You want to institute the child tax credit again you're going to need 60 votes in the Senate or at least 55 votes to change the filibuster. So in the November 2022 midterm election, we have to vote more Republicans out of the Senate and vote more Democrats into the Senate who will vote to do a carve out to the filibuster or change the filibuster rules. Because I don't think you're going to get I don't think you're going to get 60 Democrats uh, out of the 2022 midterm election. I don't think you're going to pick up 10 seats in the Senate. You can pick up five. Possible you could pick up 10, but it's it's a long shot to pick up 10. You get to 55, you can do carve outs to the filibuster and get some more of these bills passed. And, and change the filibuster, go back to a standing talking filibuster also, so because it's too easy to implement the filibuster rule. You can just call from your Senate office and tell the Senate majority leader that you want to filibuster a bill. Historically, it was not that easy to filibuster a bill. OK, uh, lifting. So cut child black child poverty by 33 percent, lifting more than one million black children out of poverty in December 2021 alone. Keep in mind, 
the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, no Republicans in the House or the Senate voted for the bill. So when, Repub so when Republicans come to you for the 2022 midterm election, talk about how great the American Rescue Plan has been for their state or for their district, you'll be armed with the information to ask the question, why didn't you vote for the bill? If you're talking about how good the bill is, why didn't you vote for the bill? The president's plans call for extending this critical tax cut, which expired in December 2021, in addition to the American Rescue Plan increase, uh, SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition uh, Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP benefits increased by 15% through September 2021, beginning on October 4th, 2021, October 1st, 2021, USDA's thrifty plan updated increased SNAP benefits by 363 $36 and 30, uh, 30 cents per person per month. Okay. Also remember there was $46.5 billion to help people with rental assistance and landlords uh, pay like their mortgages, things like this. That was in the American Rescue Plan as well. Help keep a lot of African Americans in their homes. Uh, no Republicans voted for the bill. Reversing decades of disinvestment through the bipartisan infrastructure bill. This is crucial. Most Republicans didn't vote for the bill, even though it was bipartisan in the Senate and, and originated bipartisan in the Senate. It was written by both Republicans and, and, and Democrats in the Senate. Only 19 out of 50 Republicans voted for the bill in the Senate, which means most of them didn't vote for it. And only about 13 or 14 out of 215 voted for it in the House of Representatives. For years, politicians have talked about investing in our national infrastructure. But up until now, they have failed to follow through. The lack of investment has fallen most heavily on black and, and other communities of color. The bipartisan infrastructure law will, will replace lead pipes like in Flint, Michigan, and 3,000 other communities who had a higher lead level uh, rate in their water than Flint, Michigan did. It increased access to good paying jobs expand affordable high-speed internet, especially in rural communities, and 25% of African Americans live in rural America. Uh, it'll increase reliable public transportation, clean drinking water. It'll reconnect black neighborhoods divided by legacy highway infrastructure, like the uh, Buffalo Eastside community, where the Topps market, market is, where the shooting took place, the, the, the Buffalo, uh, uh, Buffalo, New York shooting, okay? That was that community was divided by an expressway. Detroit was divided by an expressway. Uh, uh, Black Bottom, where I-375 runs through, was wiped out because of an expressway, because of the U.S. Interstate Highway Acts in 1952 and 56. Part of the infrastructure bill is going to start address to address that harm that's been done to these communities, especially the African-American community. Now, a lot of Republicans want to either not acknowledge the harm that was done or they want to say that was a long time ago. What does that have to do with today? And most of them didn't vote for this bill. Reconnect black neighborhoods divided by legacy highway infrastructure and others to finally and, and other resources to finally give black communities a fair shot at the American dream. Then they deal with the bipartisan infrastructure law permanently authorizes the MBDA Minority Business Development Agency for the first time since its inception and elevates the agency head to position to the position of undersecretary granting granting the expanded power to support black and other minority owned businesses the president's plans would supercharge mbda by funding it at a 1.6 funding it at 1.6 billion dollars through 2029 they deal with the epa environmental protection agency announced it would allocate 2.9 billion dollars in the bipartisan infrastructure law to states tribes and territories for lead service line replacement in 2022 um the 2022 allocation is okay uh, let me go through this this bipartisan infrastructure bill delivers the largest investment in tackling legacy pollution in american history african americans disproportionately live in areas that have higher levels of pollution in American history by cleaning up Superfund and brownfield sites, reclaiming abandoned mine land and capping orphaned oil and gas wells. More than one in four black Americans live within three miles of a Superfund site, 
a, a higher percentage than for uh, Americans overall. No community deserves to have contamination near where they live, play, pray, or go to school. Leveraging federal procurement to narrow the racial wealth gap for black entrepreneurs and families. Recognizing that the federal government spends more than $650 billion each year on purchasing goods and services, uh, President Joe Biden and the Biden-Harris administration has directed agencies to use federal purchasing power, use federal purchasing power to grow federal contracting with underserved small businesses. So we need to apply to get these contracts, apply more to get these contracts. He also has set a goal of increasing the share of federal contracting dollars to small disadvantaged, small disadvantaged businesses by 50 percent by the year 2025, projected to translate to an additional 100 billion dollars to minority owned businesses and helping more Americans realize their entrepreneurial dreams. So we should focus on becoming the majority of the minorities getting the additional 100 billion dollars african americans should focus on being the majority of the quote unquote minorities getting the additional 100 billion dollars you can wait on reparations this money's here right now federal government spends more than 650 billion dollars each year on purchasing goods and services we should focus on being the majority of the minority getting the additional $100 billion that's going to be allocated to minority-owned businesses. You can wait on reparations if you want to. This money is here now, and other pots of money as well are here now. Now, in December 2021, the administration further announced reforms to the federal procurement, pro procurement process to help meet the president's ambitious target and deliver new opportunities, deliver new opportunities for black owned and other small advantage and small disadvantaged businesses. We should be taking advantage of these opportunities. I'm someone who managed black owned companies that had government contracts with the city of Detroit, County of Wayne and the state of Michigan that took, that took advantage of the minority business certifications that they had and the minority business status which is a process of verification you got to go through. You got to go through a verification process to become a vendor of city government, county government, state government, federal government. So I've been through that process and we had to go through the recertification process to maintain our, um, our uh, account for the county of Wayne, which is the county that Detroit is in for our, our uh, small business and minority business status. We had to go through a recertification process for that. OK, uh, read the rest of this. They go through everything. Ensuring black homeowners get full value for their homes. They deal with fighting against uh, uh, the uh, discrimination when it comes to home appraisals, protecting black Americans access to housing by combating housing discrimination helping black Americans stay in their homes. Uh, that deals with the money in the American Rescue Plan. Very few people talk about that. No Republicans in the House or the Senate voted for it. This is huge right here. This is one of the ways that means of acres of land has been stolen from African Americans. Heirs property, heirs property law. You've heard me talk about this. Assisting black landowners in resolving title issues. Who's talking about this? This is what the Biden-Harris administration is doing right now. Assisting black landowners in resolving title issues. An estimated 60% of black owned land in the South is heirs property, heirs property, H E I R S apostrophe, heirs property. Pro this is property that passes through inheritance, property that passes through inheritance, inheritance without a will, without a will, and that as a result has historically rendered owners ineligible for u.s department of agricultural usda programs so because of the heirs property law and us getting land from one of our ancestors without a will many of us got locked out of u.s department of agricultural u.s department of agricultural 
agriculture programs, USDA programs, that our taxpayer dollars are paying for. They're addressing it. They're addressing this. In July 2021, the USDA rolled out the Heirs Property Relending Program, the Heirs Property Relending Program, which primarily aids underserved communities, including African Americans or Black Americans. The new program, <coughs> excuse me, my allergy is still acting up, but it's much better now than it was two weeks ago. The new program provides funds to assist heirs in resolving ownership and, su and succession issues on farmland with multiple owners. Is anybody explaining this to you? Who's heard of this before besides this show? Because I've talked about this before on this show. Who's heard about this? This is stuff taking place now. You can wait on reparations if you want to. This is stuff happening right now that has an economic impact on African Americans. Dismantling barriers to, act, to uh, accessing USDA, U.S. Department of Agriculture programs and services. The American Rescue Plan provides funding for the USDA to establish one or more equity commissions to address historical discrimination and disparities in the agricultural sector. In February 2022, USDA, the USDA announced the, the membership of its 15 member equity commission advisory committee and equity commission subcommittee on agriculture. The equity commission advisory committee will advise the secretary of agriculture by identifying USDA programs, uh, policies, systems, structures, and practices that contribute to barriers uh, to inclusion or access systemic discrimination or exacerbate or perpetual or, or perpetuate races, racial, perpetuate racial, economic health and social disparities. Reducing barriers, next, reducing barriers for black communities facing natural disasters. Okay, this deals with FEMA. In September 2021, FEMA implemented policy changes to reduce barriers that contributed to disparities experienced by black Americans through programs that provide individual assistance to disaster survivors. These included changes to FEMA policies to make it easier for people living on heirs property, like a lot of the land we owned in the South. This makes it easier for people living on heirs property which is estimated to be the majority of black owned land in the South. This makes it easier for them to apply for disaster aid. Next, ensuring that federal grants don't support discriminatory activities. OK, they break this down. Go read that. Uh, they, they, they cite Title six of the 1964 Civil Rights Act that we sh showed you here. OK. Uh, in, uh, in September 2021, the Department of Justice began a review of its grant making programs to ensure that federal funds are not distributed to agencies that engage in racial discrimination and violation of Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, Section 601, non-discrimination and federally assisted programs. Next bullet point, improving the customer service, the customer experience and service delivery. OK, you can read that. Next, reducing child care costs for black families reducing child care costs for black families the american rescue plan secured a 39 billion dollar lifeline to help child care providers stay open to help child care providers stay open and compensate early childhood educators do you know any any early childhood educators and compensate early childhood educators this who are disproportionately african americans early childhood educators who are disproportionately African-Americans as they provide safe and healthy environments for children and help parents work, which help parents get back to work. Black families are nearly two times more likely than white parents to have quit their job, turn down employment, or make a major change in their job due to child care disruptions. Is anybody explaining this to you? The pandemic, coronavirus pandemic, exacerbated the child care disruptions and by March 2021 had led to 
nine percent of child care providers closing nine percent n-i-n-e the american rescue plan which no republicans in the house or the senate voted for only people who voted for the bill are, are, are democrats and the bill is written by democrats also i need the democrat nor republican sure as hell ain't stupid the american rescue plan also included an expansion of the child independent care tax credit a median income with two kids under age eight, 13 will receive up to eight thousand dollars towards their child care expenses when the file tax when they file taxes for 2021 compared with the minimum of one thousand two hundred uh, one thousand two hundred dollars previously do you think that's gonna help do you think that's you can you can weigh on reparations there's money here right now this is huge no republicans in the house or the senate voted for this bill so when republicans come to you in november 2022 for the midterm elections talking about what they're going to do and all this stuff you yeah, I, see i i hope they i hope they run up on me because i got something for them because i'm gonna run through all this stuff down to them and, and say well why'd you vote against all this stuff next bullet point advancing equitable employment outcomes and boosting wages for black federal workers this is ex executive order that president joe biden did did you hear about this in june of 2021 president joe biden signed an executive order on advancing diversity equity inclusion and accessibility deia in the federal workforce the executive order launched a whole a whole of government initiative to go to cultivate a federal workforce that draws from the full diversity of the nation it and, and that advances equitable employment opportunities for workers from underserved communities further in in 2021 president joe biden signed a series of executive actions leading to a 15 dollars minimum wage for employees of federal contractors and federal employees $15 minimum wage for employees of federal contractors and for federal employees African-Americans disproportionately make up federal employees higher than our 12.1 percent or 13 percent population is um about 20 uh about 2018 we were 18 percent of federal employees In 2021, President Joe Biden signed a series of, of a series of executive actions leading to a $15 minimum wage, not maximum, $15 minimum wage for employees of federal contractors and for federal employees. These, did you hear about this? These actions will ensure that all federal workers, including black federal workers, have fair access to federal employment opportunities and will also represent a step towards addressing long standing wage disparities read the rest of this this is 19 pages that go through and break down and this this is just this is a is as of uh february 28 2022 so this is just dealing with like the first year because they took the oath of office january 20th 2021 so this is like just like the first year historic investments to safely reopen schools and address the needs of students i can tell you 700 million dollars is coming to detroit public schools from the biden harris administration dr nikolai Vitti, the superintendent of the detroit public school district that he announced they're going to use that to renovate five schools here in detroit that desperately need it that's coming from the biden harris administration 700 million dollars when it came when, when when during during the pandemic the height of it now the american rescue plan was uh signed into law march of 2021 okay two months after biden and harris were sworn in you had republicans talking about open the schools open the schools back up remember schools were shut down the different different cities across the country remember the the governors had to shut schools down okay because under the trump administration there was lack of direction under the trump administration so governors had to take it upon themselves and you know they had to close schools based upon their coronavirus rates and things and the spread of it things like this right you have republicans saying open the schools open the schools back up they ain't care about safety for the most part they ain't care about safety when it came time 
to fund the fund the schools and pay for better ventilation systems in the schools so that they could have smaller classrooms have less students in the classrooms pay more uh uh, uh teachers pay more paraprofessionals different things like this and have smaller classroom sizes so the so the students can be distanced okay and pay for better ventilation systems in the in the schools when it came time to pay for this no republicans in the house or the senate voted for the bill historic investments to safely reopen schools and address the needs of students we know that um even though students were going to school online it's not the same as being in person and african-american students you know fell behind some of them fell behind by having to do school remotely all of them didn't have access to high-speed internet the american rescue plan provided 130 billion dollars to help elementary and secondary schools safely re safely reopen and address the academic social and emotional and mental health needs of all students with funding set aside to address the needs of students disproportionately impacted by the pandemic including african-american students the administration's efforts to encourage all schools to adopt the cdc's recommendations on masking vaccinations and other COVID-19 protocols have been particularly critical to the safe reopening of schools in African-American communities hit hard by COVID-19. So you had all these Republicans saying, open the schools, open the schools. When it came time to fund opening the schools, none of them voted for the bill. What you vote for shows me what you value. What you vote for shows me what you value. Put your vote where your mouth is. In addition to funding the implementation of COVID-19 protocols, these funds are being used to hire counselors and social workers, provide tutors, establish and expand summer and after school programming and provide a wide, a wide range of supports that address the needs of black students. Now, this increase in hiring, we need to get these jobs. Contracts given out for tutoring, stuff like that, we need to apply for that. That's a reallocation of taxpayer dollars. We need to go after all this money. I have no problem. I'm all for reparations. It ain't coming no time soon. This money's here right now. If let, let, Let's look at it this way. If you couldn't get reparations, for four million former slaves during reconstruction 1865 1877 while they were still alive after slavery ended uh how likely do you think it is you're gonna get reparations 157 years after chattel slavery ended then all the former slaves died in the 1950s and now you're dealing with about 50 million african americans if you couldn't get reparations for four million former slaves while they were alive during reconstruction and they passed the 13th amendment 14th amendment 15th amendment created the freedmen's uh bureau in 1865 created the freedmen's bank in 1865 okay had special field order number 15 40 acres and a mule all that uh, uh january 1865. if you couldn't get reparations while the slaves were alive during reconstruction when all this momentum and all these laws are being passed to help African Americans, how likely do you think it is to get reparations today, 157 years after chattel slavery ended? I'm all I'm all for repairing the damage of slavery. I know it ain't gonna happen no time soon. And I understand you're gonna need 60 votes in the Senate. So uh that's long term. While you keep while we keep pushing for that, this money's here right now. So so that grantees could safely open safely for in-person services and support children and families through the pandemic. 
protecting students from funding cuts, protecting students from funding cuts, funding cuts, the American Rescue Plan, American Rescue Plan's elementary and secondary school emergency relief program includes a first of its kind maintenance of equity requirement to ensure high poverty school districts and schools are protected in the event of future funding cuts. The Department of Education has provided resources and technical assistance to states and school districts as they implement this new requirement, which will ensure that school districts and schools serving a large share of students from low income backgrounds will not experience disproportionate cuts and that school districts with the highest poverty levels, school districts with the highest poverty levels do not experience any decrease in state per pupil funding below their pre-pandemic level. We've talked about this here before. Very few people talk about this. I don't know why. They deal with all the conspiracy theory nonsense floating around. Not, they don't want to deal with the facts. Historic support for historically black colleges and universities. Biden-Harris administration has delivered a historic $5.8 billion cumulative investment in support for HBCUs. This was in 2021. The American Rescue Plan and other pandemic relief programs have provided $3.7 billion to HBCUs since uh, President Biden took office. <clears throat> Additionally, in April 2021, the Department of Education provided approximately $1.6 billion in debt relief for HBCUs, approximately $1.6 billion in debt relief to 45 HBCUs, including 13 public institutions and 32 private institutions. In July and August of 2021, the Department of Education awarded more than $500 million in grant funding to HBCUs for academic capacity building and fiscal stability. Okay. President Biden signed an executive order establishing the White House Initiative and in Advancing Educational Equity, Opportunity, and Excellence through HBCUs, which will create a government-wide approach to support, to support the needs of HBCUs and communities they serve and eliminate systemic bar barriers and uh, impeding uh, HBCU participation in federal programs. And in February 2022, appointed Dietra Trent former Virginia Deputy Secretary of Education as the initiative's executive director. Read the rest of this. Nobody's saying things are perfect for HBCUs. They get a lot more support from this administration than they have from previous administrations. And they got a record amount of funding in 2021. Improving health outcomes for black communities. Facing a one in a century pandemic that highlighted and, exa and exa exacerbated pre-existing racial disparities in health in our healthcare system. President Biden took swift action to promote better health access and outcomes for black families. The American Rescue Plan lowered healthcare costs for millions of lower and middle income black families and invested billions to promote equitable vaccine distribution and provide critical supplies to stop the spread of COVID-19. These policies and programs include lowering health care costs. Uh, you can read the rest of that. Improving Black maternal health. There was a Black maternal health summit held for the first time in, I think that was late 2021 at the White House, headed by Vice President Kamala Harris. The administration is also committed to improving maternal health outcomes, including addressing the unacceptably high rates of maternal mortality and morbidity that disproportionately impact black mothers and families. The president's fiscal year 2022 budget request includes more than $200 million to, bo to bolster maternal mortality review committees, implement implicit bias training for healthcare providers, which is critical, and create state pregnancy medical home programs, among other actions. It also includes $6 billion for the critical uh, SNAP supplemental nutrition program for women, infants and children, uh, WIC, a program to help vulnerable families put healthy food on the table and address racial disparities in maternal and child health outcomes. The president's plan includes a historic $3 billion investment in maternal health focused on growing and diversifying 
the the uh, perinatal workforce, improving data collection and maternal health risk monitoring, addressing the social addressing the social factors that contribute to poor maternal health outcomes, and addressing substance abuse, uh, addressing substance use disorders that impact maternal health, promoting increased maternal health research, improving postpartum uh, coverage, and better coordinating and better coordinating care. This includes sparking innovation by allowing states to establish maternal health homes to better coordinate health care for individuals before, during, and following birth. It would also require all states to provide continuous Medicare coverage for 12 months postpartum, eliminating potentially deadly gaps in health insurance at a critical time for individuals. Currently, states are only required to provide coverage for 60 days postpartum, despite research showing that many deaths and complications occur more than 60 days following delivery. Okay, read the rest of this. Okay, this once again, this is 19 pages. Go through and read this. Building the pipeline of black health care providers. Building the pipeline of black health care providers. The Biden Harris administration has made a historic $1.5 billion investment to help grow and diversify the nation's health care workforce and bolster equitable health care in the communities that need it most during the COVID-19 pandemic and in the years to come. Read the rest. Is anybody talking about this? Ensuring an equitable pandemic response. Okay, you read that to go break, break this down also. Uh, taking strong action to reform our criminal justice system from investing in community violence interventions, community violence interventions, to reforming law enforcement, to reducing mass incarceration practices, to supporting reentry. The Biden Harris administration has taken concrete actions to reform the criminal justice system and address racial disparities. The policies and programs include reforming law enforcement practices. You can read this as well. This deals with uh, uh, at the federal level. OK, uh, read this. This is before Biden's executive order, May 25th, 2022, because this report here is as of February 28th, 2022. So there's some recent things that the administration has done that are not included in this report. Ensuring constitutional policing. We read that. Improving prosecutorial guidance to prevent unduly harsh sentence, supporting legislation to end racial disparities in cocaine sentencing, su support for community violence intervention, CVI programs, support for community violence intervention programs, okay, uh, support for reentry returning citizens, okay, re for support for reentry of returning citizens, those coming back home from prison. Addressing domestic violent extremism. President Biden directed the U.S. government to uh, assess the threat of domestic violent extremism in the United States. In January 2020, uh, 2022, Secretary of the Department of Defense, Lloyd J. Austin, ordered the Department of Defense wide stand, uh, wide stand down to discuss the problem of extremism in the ranks. And in April, he established a countering extremism working group uh director uh department of defense officials directing department of defense officials to review and update the definition of extremism contained in the in uh, dod instruction uh 1325 uh, uh 06 and calling on the services to update transition instructions to prevent those leaving the military from being recruited by extremist groups read the rest of that using executive action to protect voting rights democracy and access to justice okay read that signing executive order for voting promoting access to voter registration and voting ensuring compliance with voting rights laws um appointing and confirming black judges they've been doing that at the federal level and u.s supreme court restoring fairness and humanity to our immigration system Extending and redesigning, uh, re extending and re de redesignating Haiti and Somalia for temporary protected status. Restarting the Haitian Family Reunification Parole Program. Supporting immigration reform legislation. 
President Biden's proposed plan will promote investment and in economic opportunity in black communities. Biden's plans will reverse decades of disinvestment and wealth extraction in black communities, other communities of color and rural communities, and drive good jobs and opportunity to every corner of the country, making long needed once in a generation, making long needed once in a generation investments in underserved communities. The president intends to make universal preschool a reality, cut child care costs, increase access to high quality child care, et cetera. Read the rest of that. Sustain investment in HBCUs. Unwavering support for the fundamental and sacred right to vote. Transforming public education with historic funding increases. Fiscal year 2023 budget is available now also at whitehouse.gov as well. This deals with fiscal year 2022 budget. Fiscal year 2023. Fiscal year 2023 budget is available. You can read that also. It's about 74, 75 pages. Addressing police misconduct. Okay, so read the rest of this here. This is as of February 28th, 2022. There's more that's happened since then. This has to be updated. So read this at whitehouse.gov. Biden-Harris administration fact sheet. The Biden-Harris administration advances equity and opportunity for black people and communities across the country. You can read this in its entire. It's 19 pages. I zipped through this. There's more I just don't have time to get to. Okay. There's more I just don't have time to get to. Uh, I'm going to post the link here so you can read this. Uh, let's post this link right here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I want to go back to this clip here. I was playing this before. Uh, we lost 9, 10 a.m. WFDF. Let's go back to this clip here. I was on Roland Martin and filtered Friday, um, June 3rd, 2022. We were talking about, um, 300, uh, 390,000 new jobs. We're talking about the May jobs report and, uh, the lack of, communication from the white house on the positive things they've been doing in their policies okay there's a there's a problem with the white house communication staff okay um in communicating what they've actually done okay let's go back to this clip here lineos it's in january before putin went into ukraine gas has gone up a dollar and 40 cents now right. the reality is Biden can't stop that. Congress can't stop that. And I think part of this problem is that we have a bunch of simple Simons in this country who somehow don't understand that we literally are living in a global economy. And what the hell happened to the other side of the world has a direct impact on price of gasoline in the United States. Well, you're absolutely correct. The, uh, the European Union, it just came out 8.1% uh, inflation year over year. Uh, so what happens on the other side of the world impacts what happens here in the U.S. So, yes, uh, Biden and the White House, they need to have town hall meetings. Uh, they need to communicate the message over and over and over again. Also, they really need to hire some social media experts who can break this information down, disseminate this information to people who don't follow this on a daily basis to Generation Z, to uh, millennials, et cetera. They have, they, they have good numbers, just like, you know, I think the uh, week before last, because we went on last Friday for Memorial Day, week before last, there's a night, I talked about this 19 page document at whitehouse.gov that breaks down how the Biden-Harris administration policies are helping the African-American community. You, you, you would think that they would have that like on the front page of whitehouse.gov, okay? I know about it because I, I research things like that. But a lot of people don't know this stuff exists. If people just Google, how have the policies of the Biden-Harris administration helped African-Americans? But they're not. They okay, but Michael, that's the point. Yeah. No, the average person's not going to Google it. So you have to right. say it. It has to be consistent. You're going to be flooding the zone. You're going to be pushing people out there, driving the messaging. And I'm sorry, that's what they're not doing. And it's confusing to me why they're not. I mean, look, you mentioned social media. 
The story that I saw today, you got 70 people working in the White House dealing with social media. What the hell? What are they doing, though? What are they I have no idea what the hell they're doing. Yeah, I, I don't know. So, there, see, there's a one, there's, there's, you can have people working on social media, but they're not effective in working in social media. So, I'm like, what are they doing? So, th this is the other thing. So, you have to, um, and, and, you know, some of this may have to do with Biden being from a generation that, you know, when, most of the time when Biden was in the Senate, for instance, right, this was before social media really got big. Yes, we know he was in the in the White House with Obama, but it's like if you have somebody say, for instance, just give an example, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she's much better with using social media to communicate with people than Biden is. All right. And the White House is. So they have to they got to get it together. Otherwise, they're going to get killed in midterm elections. You know, now now Republicans don't have plans to deal with inflation, inflation. Republicans don't have plans to deal with the baby formula short shortage. We know a couple of weeks ago when the bill came up in the House of Representatives to address the baby formula shortage issue, 192 Republicans voted against the bill. They don't have plans to deal with it, but they're going to just complain about it and, and galvanize their, their white supremacist base along with critical race theory and all, all these other bills, voter suppression, to take back the House and the Senate. So we have to fight against that also. Bottom line here, Matt, you have strong economic numbers. Yes, you have inflation. Yes, you have an increase in gas prices. But you got to be able to better articulate what you're doing. You got to show people. And I think that's what they're not doing. They are not doing an effective job in showing people. It's just sort of this. Yes, you have, you have people who are operating in an analog world when you live in a digital world. That's exactly right. And right now, it's more important than ever, not only to piggyback what both Kelly and Michael have said, but to disseminate that information and to make it digestible. Because to Kelly's earlier point, I think the American citizenry right now is is scared. I mean, there's so much going on. There's so many things that are having a measurable effect on their lives. So I think it's important for the Biden administration to counter that by saying, look, there is some good going on. And that good hopefully will translate to a well, better life for you. And here's how we anticipate that will happen. So, all right, you can watch the rest of that at uh, Roland Martin and uh, Roland Martin on Facebook and YouTube. That's from uh, Friday, June 3rd. Uh, 2022, and that is um, that is uh, May Jobs, and let's see here the, the name of that that they have here is uh, May Jobs in U.S. Economy Uvalde Funerals Protect Our Kids Act Buffalo 911. Okay, so. Check that out at Roland Martin and Filter. Oh, Roland Martin on, on uh, YouTube and Facebook. All right. Um, be sure to register for the online history classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. We had a great class this weekend. Uh, Sunday, I teach from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. And we start out in... Uh, 1803 with the Louisiana, right about 1803 with the Louisiana Purchase and the Haitian Revolution. Okay. And then um, we deal with uh, history chronologically leading up to the Civil War and Reconstruction, uh, Jim Crow era, World War I, World War II, Civil Rights Movement, Black Power Movement. I'm going to post a link here. We have a bundle pack where you get both classes that I teach for only $100. It's a $360 value because there's a lot of bonus content that you get. And then uh, this class is on sale, $60, regular $130. We do the classes live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. Even a year from now, two years from now, you can go back and watch the full class. You don't have to be present in class when we do the sessions live. Uh, Saturdays, I teach ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, where they didn't teach you in school. Okay. So uh, this one here, we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to uh, the... Uh, transatlantic slave trade taking place and we're, uh, this class is on sale sixty dollars regularly 130 dollars we're going to post this link here um also okay so as soon as you register for it you can watch uh the class we just did this weekend and we have the uh documentary heavy is the crown uh, available at our website africanhistorynetwork.com this is with african origins of the major religions Professor uh, James Small, Professor Kabahai Wathakamane, and Tony Browder. 
it's uh, twenty five dollars. You get one of my lectures free with it also. OK, look, we have to get out of here. Remember, the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora, throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over to win Wakanda forever. And we'll talk to you 